Hi, welcome to Mindful Conversations. I'm Greg Dwyer, and I'm so pleased that you're joining us right now today. Every episode, I have the desire to give you something to think about, and today's no exception. Our guest today is Kevin Lane and his wife, Lori. They created a company here in Connecticut called Create a Castle. In fact, yesterday they were on my podcast. I met them through some friends from high school, delightful couple, and you're going to want to hear what they say it took them to become successful business people. Whether you have a business or not, or whether you just want to be successful in life, you're going to want to listen to Kevin and Lori today as they talk about their business model and how they became a huge success. I don't know if you've ever been on a beach. I know I have. My family, we used to go to Florida all the time, my sister and my dad and mom, and used to take a bucket and you'd fill it up with sand, right? And then you turn it upside down and maybe you kind of jiggle it and then you open it up and then you hope that that piece of sand is still there. And a lot of times it would fall apart, you know, it wouldn't work, but you would try it again. And as kids, it was just a lot of fun. In life and in business, a lot of times things don't go right the first time. And a lot of times what happens is people just quit. You know, they try something, it doesn't work, they get discouraged. But when we were little kids, we tried something, and if it didn't work, we tried something else. And if that didn't work, we tried something else. Well, Kevin today is going to talk about how he thought differently, how he changed his mind to look at something differently. And in the process of looking at it differently, he created a great business. And we're going to hear about him and what his wife has put together in this company called Create a Castle. Now, I want to talk a little bit about business success from my point of view. I started in sales about 20 years ago, and the one thing that really helped me was Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. When I first learned sales and I learned marketing, it was all the technique and all of the, um, the flow charts of how to close a sale and how to bring someone through the pipeline, all of the technique of it. But I got to tell you, it was the soft skills of Dale Carnegie that really changed my life. Because this is what I learned. In business and in life, it takes a team. And over here I have the triangle, here I have self, and here I have others. You need a team, and we're going to talk to Kevin about this, and I know this from personal experience as well, is that you need a team to support you no matter what you're doing. You need people to support you. I have a graphic designer. I have a person that does websites for me. I have a person that does business cards. I have an agent. I have a person that does publicity for me. I have a person that does sales for me. I know in my speaking business, I could never do it alone. I have myself, but I also have other people who help me. It's a team. And in the process of having a team, everyone wins. And Kevin's going to talk about this because we talked about it last night on my podcast. And I know that you're going to want to find a team as well that is going to help you in your life, personal life, okay, or also in your business life as well. Now, I do a workshop called The Magic of Communication. And what I share with people is that not everybody sees the world the same way as you do. You know, it's almost like glasses. We have these filters that we put on and we see the world a certain way. But when we meet other people, we realize they see the world a little different than the way that we see the world. And if you're going to build a team, whether it's just for personal or it's for business, it's important to understand where other people are coming from. And of course, this is the whole principle of Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. I highly recommend that if you don't have the book, buy the book. And if you do have the book, read it. But don't just read it. Read it again every single year and put it into practice. It is a game changer. Because what it will help you do is build relationships. Studies have shown that people who know how to connect with other people, whether it's people that they need to call at 2 o'clock in the morning because something terrible has happened, or whether it's just connecting with people at a restaurant or the clerk behind the desk. It's people that know how to connect. They have longevity in their life, and they tend to be more happier. 
And so what Dale Carnegie teaches us is to see things from another person's perception, the way they see it. And that's what's really important. In my lecture, The Magic of Communication, I hold up a map, just like I'm holding up a map right now. This happens to be a map of Florida because in January, in February, I went to Florida to do some presentations, about nine of them. And when I hold up the map here in Connecticut or in the tri-state area, I make it known that it's a map from Florida. And the map isn't going to necessarily work in Connecticut. It's not going to work in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, or New York. It's only going to work in Florida. And the map is really just a re-representation of reality. This map, even though it's the map of Florida, isn't really Florida. You can't open up this map and put it on the floor and walk to it and get to Florida. There's no way you can do that. All it is is a re-representation of Florida. Inside my mind is a re-representation of reality. Inside your mind is a re-representation of reality. All of your past, all of the things that have happened to you, how you filter your life, how you see the world, is the map that you create based on your values, based on your beliefs, and based on really how you see the world. And if you're going to create strong relationships, or you're going to create a team of people that are going to help you either build your life, get you to the next level, or help you in your business, you're going to have to understand people. People are the greatest asset for personal life and also for business life. And I know Kevin's going to share that information with you at the second half of the program. In my program, The Magic of Communication, I talk about four elements of personality. And because my company is called Diamond Mind Potential, I have these four diamonds. They're about the size of my, my hand here. And the first diamond that I bring out is a red diamond. And the red diamond represents the person over here that is focused on results. For them, results is everything. For them, money is everything. If you're talking to them at a party, what's important to them is results, getting to the next level. In fact, most likely they wouldn't even be at the party unless they were there for business reasons. These are people that are focused on the end game or the results. For them, it's about success. It's about driving the fast car. It's about looking successful, being successful, having a lot of money in the bank, and being focused on results. This is what I call the red diamond or the red personality. Then I talk about a yellow diamond, and it's different from the red diamond because the yellow diamond focuses on relationships. This is a person that is concerned about building relationships with other people. They're not so much concerned about results as far as money or success or having a nice fancy car or Corvette or driving fast. For the yellow personality or the yellow diamond as I call it and I show it in my lecture, it's all about relating to people, building relationships with other people and really caring from the heart doesn't necessarily mean you're a mother, could be a father, could be a business person, could be a teacher, could be a nurse, but this personality really cares about people. They love people. They love to be hugged. Now, here's the thing that's interesting. A red personality most likely will marry a red, uh, excuse me, not a red, uh, because they'll kill each other, a yellow because the yellow personality outbalances the red or vice versa. This person's into results. This person is just interested in relating with other people. A lot of times they will not see the world the same way, but they like the characteristics of the other person. You know, a red and a red, that's going to cause a little bit of problems. Or even a yellow and a yellow. Most people marry people or connect with people that are different. They have different strengths and they have different weaknesses. Then I talk about the green personality. And the green personality is interesting. I have this green diamond that I show the audience. And the green personality is the analytical person. It's the engineer. It's the person that really thinks things through and really does the details and really studies. And for them, the results are not the issue. The relationships are not the issue. What the issue for the green personality is to be correct. 
they want to be right. If you ask them to join you on a trip or they ask uh, a question about, you know, do you have the information, they will tell you, no. I have to do the research and they are seriously going to do that research. They're going to study, they're going to make sure they get everything correct. For them, it's about having all of the facts. So if you put a green personality in the room with a red personality, the red personality is going to make a decision really quickly. They're just going to make a quick, quick decision and they're just going to go with their intuition, they're going to go with their guts, that's how they think. The green personality, they're going to talk slower, they're going to have to think about it, and they're going to go home and they're going to do the research because they want to make sure they're not wrong. And a lot of times these people are caught up in what we call paralysis of analyzing the situation. And a lot of times they don't take risks like the red personality because they're afraid. They're afraid that they might be wrong. And the last personality is a blue personality. A blue personality, I bring out the blue diamond, is a person that just likes to have fun. If you say there's a cruise coming up or there's a party, 4th of July, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun, there's going to be food, they're in. If you tell them, you know, there's going to be a social meeting up in Litchfield, they're going to be there. Or in Cronwell or wherever it is, a great party, there's going to be fun, there's going to be music, there's going to be dancing, and people are just going to have the time of their life. The blue personality is going to want to do it. Maybe they're on social media, they show you all the pictures of them eating out and being with friends and having a great time. These are the different personalities that I talk about in my lecture, The Magic of Communication. Because everyone is walking around with a different map of reality, of how they see the world. And if you're going to build a life, you're going to want to do it with other people. If you're going to build a business, and we're going to hear from Kevin in a few minutes about this, you're going to want to bring different personalities into your business because these people will all help you to build a very successful business. So you might be a red, you need a yellow. You might be a yellow, you need a red. Maybe you're analytical and you think things through. But you also need someone that's going to say, hey, let's have fun with this business. And so by building a team, you have a strong foundation, whether it's for your personal life or whether it's for your business life. So I'd love to hear from you. Go to gregdewire.com. Send me an email. I'd love to hear if you're a red, if you're a yellow, if you think you're a green, or you think you're a blue. And you probably know someone that are those colors. But what about you? How do you see yourself as far as these different four colors, these different personalities? I'd love to hear from you. Go to gregdewire.com. And we will be back right after this break with Kevin Lane and also with his wife, Lori, to talk about creating a castle. And you can find them at createacastle.com. Thanks. Come on back. back. We are with Kevin Lane and Lori Lane. They created a company called Create a Castle. And what I love about it is it's here local, it's family owned, and I'm totally inspired by their message. So thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us, Greg. So I did some research, uh, 19, what was it? Two, no, 2016, right? 2016, 2016 yep. Laguna Beach. Yep. And um, 
you saw something and then you created this vision. Tell us the story, I'd love to hear about this. Yeah, in, in brief, so we went on vacation. My wife is Greek and we have family everywhere. We're out in California, in Laguna Beach, California. And uh, while visiting, I love to build sandcastles. We're on a beach. Saw a dad and his son struggling on the beach with one of the traditional bottom fill molds where he flipped it over, he lifted it, nothing came out. Yeah. Finally did get it to work and it was collapsed when he lifted it. So that's when I thought, you know, I have all these tool sets. They don't know really how to use those. They don't have the means. So why not come up with something that's super portable that people can bring with them on vacation wow. and have fun. Wow. And I heard yesterday, because we did a podcast, mm -hmm. that before 2016, that there's a backstory about this, that when you were a small child. Yep. Tell us that. Yeah, so I grew up in a bakery. Yeah. Um, and during that time, my mom and my grandmother, who ran the business of the bakery, were always real busy, so my mom was trying to always keep me entertained. Yeah. She got me a drawing book by a fellow by the name of Lee J. Ames, a famous artist back in the day. In that book, uh, I taught you how to draw buildings and other structures, and the other structures happened to be, lo and behold, castles. Wow. So I would spend hours at a time drawing these castles and watching them bake, and they would use their spring form pans and traditional methods to do the tiered wedding cakes right. while I'm drawing my castles, and it all kind of melded into this business. I, I really firmly believe that. Wow. Now, I remember being a kid, and make believe this is a bucket. So I take my bucket with my sister Maureen, and we take the sand, we, we shove it in, we put some water on there, yep. and we hold it down. And then I remember like taking this bucket and turning it upside down, you know, and then you're holding it there, and then you lift it up, and then the sides like just crumble. Yep. And so you figured out a way so that kids don't have to be disappointed? 90% of the time, yes. You, I mean, you, you gotta show us, how, how does this work? So basically there's a whole system to it. Okay. These are the hollow cylinders, they split in half. Wow. They all stack on top of each other. And they basically use this tool, this multi-tool, because there still is a vacuum in here when you divide it. Okay. So this tool becomes a divider Oh. That you insert into the seam and twist up or down. Right. And then it just splits apart. So this opens on both sides. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, all right. Oh, okay. Like this. All right. So then you're putting this together. Yep. They just click together and they can conveniently come into a backpack. Wow. Very which nice. Which is something my wife, you know, being a mom, yep. it's so important to have something that's portable. It's not going to bring a ton of sand home. Right. Okay. You know, it's a nice mesh backpack. And you can get that on the plane. You can take these pieces in your suitcase. Uh, Absolutely. All right. So in other words, you're putting this together. You're putting the sand in this way. Mm -hmm. And then, then you just crack it. Oh, okay. Yep. You would fill, well, actually you would throw this on top. Why would this you throw this on top? You stack upward. Oh. And you're creating, it's, it's almost like a tiered wedding cake. Oh, okay. All right. So you just keep stacking gotcha. upward. Gotcha. And then eventually, then you're going to open it up? Yeah, you work from the, always with sandcastles, you work from the top Okay, downward. so then you're opening the top first. Then, That's right. And then, so this is the last That's one you're the opening. That's the last thing you open. Okay. Yep. Now, how did you get this design? Like, did you just uh, do this yourself? I mean, we talked about teamwork. So what was the team that put this together for you? Yeah, so I met a fellow by, in the process by the name of Joel Hogue. Okay. Um, he's an engineer out of New York City, yep. super talented guy. Uh, met him by way of one of my other clients. And he started working with me. You know, we bartered. And mm -hmm. like you were saying before, teamwork is right. so important. Right. Um, you have to have a backbone to all the various parts of the business and he's been a, a really critical part because without engineering i wouldn't have been able to do all of the cad work and necessary yeah things to get it to manufacturing now you also mentioned yesterday at the podcast that you have website background and you mm -hmm. have a business and i i kind of get just talking from you know talking with you over the phone and also on the the podcast mm -hmm. and meeting you today that you have an analytical mind mm -hmm. it, you know so you probably have surrounded yourself uh your beautiful wife and other people that have helped you maybe with marketing or, or with other things that you um haven't been able to do yourself like i know you you were on kelly and ryan uh yes television how did that happen yeah we actually That's partnered, amazing yeah we partnered up with a great pr agent out of also out of new york city okay uh, by the name of Swartz PR, Barry yep. Swartz. And I came to realize how much of a legend he actually is in the, in the industry, okay. and especially in the toy industry. He is the guy who was 
basically responsible for introducing Legos, yep. uh, Rubik's Cube, all of these you know powerhouse toys um, throughout the years, he's basically had his touch on. So he's, um, he's been a great asset and he connected us with a guy, a fellow by the name of Chris Byrne, um, known as the toy guy. I saw that, I saw yeah. that clip, that was great. Yeah. I wish so, we could show that clip, but we can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to go to your website, so how do we see that clip? What do we do? Uh, we can just go to createacastle.com, okay. and then from there you can look under the reviews, mm -hmm. and in the review section you'll see two separate reviews. Just look for the TTPM review. It's pretty impressive, so I, take a look at it. And, and now it's, what, June, so we're six months into the holidays, so people can use this. Well, this is a nice thing. They can use this for not only the beach, they can use it in January and the winter and December because you can stuff snow in this thing. That's correct, yeah. Which is amazing. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So, yep. so, Lori, what's, what's your part in this? Everything along with him. So basically, because we have the other business as well, yep. Goat mm -hmm. Hounds. So I've been running a lot of that business yep. with the web design and the you know background of that. Um, been handling that, and then just the social media, the okay. marketing. Yeah. I was in retail for 20 years. Oh, great. I worked for Disney, so oh, nice. you know, I have the background of um, the sales and all of Very that, nice. too. So, which kind of, like you said, teamwork all, all plays in, so. Nice. Now, what did you do for Disney? Was it Disney World, Disneyland? It or was, was at it Disney Del Stores. Oh, at Disney yeah, Stores. Yeah, okay. I worked there for about 10 years, oh, and nice. I um, was a district manager when Very I left, nice. when I had our first child is when I left, so. I traveled all around, got to go to Disney World, Disneyland on conferences yes. and all sorts of different. So it was, you know, fantastic company to work for. It taught me so much yep. about customer service oh. and all of that, all of our guest relations, which is what I handle right. with all of this with Code Hounds and, you know, now with Creative Castle too. So it works right. out great. And you guys are a family business. So if someone buys this and they, they don't know how this works or they just don't have the, the capability and they send an email, are they going to get a big executive? Who are they going to get a hold of? Me. They're going to get a hold of you. <laughs> right. They're going to so, handle it. Yeah. And we, we even welcome if they want to call and talk to us. Yeah. You That's know, nice. We're, we're, we're open to that. So are you going to go on Shark Tank and, and sell this company and walk away from it or are you going to stay with it? Mm, not, not yet. We're not there yet. Okay. That would be probably years out. I want to kind of grow it and you know, show my, my kids and my whole family that look, you know, make your dreams come true. Right. Work hard for what you want and yeah. stick and to it. He's such a visionary with the things that you can do with Create a Castle. There's right. so many things that he has in the pipes. Like it's not just like a one and done product. Right. There's so many add ons, additional pieces, this is you know, wonderful. that you can add on um, different walls. There's so many different things that they have in process that even if somebody did say, hey, you know, we want to buy you out, like right. they'd have to take the brains with them to, to keep the company going. And, so. then, and then you move, move to Laguna Beach. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, that would be the dream. What yeah. she's talking about is one of the ideas we already have a provisional patent on is a slip-on tool where you slip on oh, stamps. Okay. okay. And then you could stamp the sand and make walkways oh, nice. and different things. Nice. Now, you mentioned the patent. Uh, obviously, if someone sees this broadcast and they like it and they get an idea and they go home and they, they try to do it, they're going to get a phone call from your lawyer, right? I mean, you have figured this all out. Yes. Um, how did you do that? How did you get this uh, the patent on all of this information? information? Um, you know, we, we did a lot of research when we came back from that vacation mm -hmm. uh, in Laguna Beach. Google actually has pretty much the full library of patents mm -hmm. accessible, so you can really go and research, you know, snow toys, sand toys, oh, okay. beach toys, all these different kind of keyword combinations, right. and figure out if there's anything like what you're envisioning. And, and when you did this, you found out no one had anything like this? Nothing that stacked and split in combination together. So yeah. you're telling me we put a man on the moon? <laughs> that I'm stealing your line. How's you it are. going? No, you take it. You take yeah, it. no, like I said, we, we put a man on the moon, but we didn't think to split a bucket in half or sand and snow castles. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, I love that line. And the other thing that you said yesterday on the podcast, because I asked you, is what does it take to run a business? What does it take to be successful? To take an idea, uh, to write it down, to talk about it, and then build a team of people and make it happen. And you said something that I thought was very profound. Can you elaborate that on the last five minutes that we have? Absolutely. So basically, you got to really, it, it's all about the grind and the hustle. You got to work for what you want. Mm -hmm. You can't just think of an idea and say, okay, I did it. Now it's going to come to life. You got to market it. You got to, right. you got to do your research before you even started with this whole project. I had to make decisions based on is there a market for this? Right. So I made that decision when I got the prototypes, 
I went to the beaches, I put the feelers out there. And when I had random people coming up to me saying, hey, can I invest in your business wow. on the beach? Wow. I knew I had a clear winner. Wow. Um, when, when you get total random strangers saying those type of things or you know, kids coming over to play with the system as you're building, right. great reactions from families on the beach, you, you know then at that point kind of start putting the pedal to the metal and, nice. and go for it. Yeah, I, I had a mentor years ago from Texas and he said, Greg, all you have to do is work half a day if you want to be successful in any business. And I'm like, oh, that sounds great. He goes, no, no, no. A half a day is like 12 hours a day. You know, not just putting in eight hours and working for someone else. You really have to focus. And uh, sometimes there's setbacks, but you have to keep on going. So what do you got going on locally? Are you doing anything, exhibits or anything in the Milford that I hear you say yesterday? Or we're, Yeah, we're hoping locally we're going to be hoping to uh, set up a Sandcastle event right okay. in the Milford, Connecticut. In the Milford, okay. In Lindemming Beach. Okay. Um, and also up in, where is it? Um, Revere? Revere Beach. Revere Beach. Okay. It's an in, international uh, sand sculpting okay. competition. So they get about a million visitors over three days. So wow. we're going to be a vendor at that. So. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Okay. Really so good. if people want to get a hold of you, they should go to the website. They also should join on Facebook. How do they find you on Facebook? Just create a castle. Create a castle. Yep. Easy. So if you're on Facebook, you want to you want to connect with these people, nice people, family owned, and you guarantee this, right? So in other words, if I put this together on the beach and it doesn't work, I can get my money back? <laughs> after after 30 days, yes, yeah. we, we will, you know. I'm just teasing. Yes. No, we have a lot of tips and tricks, though, too, because a lot of, you know, you, you have to play around with the sand yes. consistency yeah. and stuff. So that's he's done a ton of yeah. uh, tutorials on YouTube, too, to kind of show because, you know, every sand quality is sure. different. So sure. And we're not yeah. talking millions of dollars here. We're yeah. talking an entry, what, of $25, mm -hmm. $35, yep. Yep. right? So it's it's easy. $24.99, $29.99. $39.99 and $49.99. It's a no-brainer. I mean, what I love about it is you get the family together, whether it's team building or the family, you put away the cell phones, everything's mm -hmm. away, and you deal with relationships, and you create memories for a lifetime. It's wonderful. That's awesome, yep. So before the show, I asked you, Kevin, to think of a castle. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see it. You thought of it. And I think we talked about four castles, if I'm, I remember right. Did you share it with Lori at all? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Lori knows. And uh, I think one was Blarney Castle. Mm -hmm. I think the other one was Disney World Castle. I think Windsor Castle. And then I think the last one was Disneyland mm -hmm. Castle. So I'm just based on knowing you guys. Don't show it to me. Don't show it to the camera. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to take a wild guess <laughs> that it's not a historic castle. So that's going to eliminate two of them. So it's not Blarney, which I was there last month, and it's probably not the Windsor Castle. So it's one of the Disney castles. So I'm just going to take a guess. I'm going to say, and you mentioned you worked at Disney. So <laughs> yeah. that, that kind of, I'm gonna, it's either the one in Florida or it's the one in California. I'm going to say, <sighs> so far I've never been wrong, but I'm going to say it was Disney World in Orlando. Is that the castle yeah, that you were thought? Yeah, that's the one I circled. Yeah. Right. Let me see. Let me see. You got it right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I got it right. I'm impressed. <laughs> well, it's just a magic trick. <laughs> but listen, everybody, you got to get a hold uh, of Kevin. Uh, get on createacastle.com. Join them on Facebook. I would say buy uh, the starter kit at least and then get to work create some family values, and we'll see you next time. I see we're almost out of time. We are out of time. It's Greg DeWire. We hope that we gave you something to think about. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Thank Greg. you so Thank much. You. Thank okay. you. See you next time.